this is Will with SRT Amplification and welcome to another video. I have not done a video in a very long time, or I've not published one anyway. I had a lot of footage and somehow I got lost. The whole COVID thing broke out and you know it's just been one thing after another here recently. So anyway, I, I've got a lot of footage that I've managed to save, but I haven't got it all edited yet. Uh, so I'm working on that slowly but surely. Uh, but unfortunately all those other videos they're gonna be gone so in the first part of this video I'm gonna have to narrate over it because I lost the audio to it it's only about the first two minutes so let's see what we got on the bench so today on the bench we have a PVXR 680C PA mixer amplifier and there's a few things that are interesting about this amplifier. We're going to look at it here in a minute. But uh, my dad brought this up from Arkansas to repair the XLR socket. As you see, I'm pointing at right there. Um, it ended up getting damaged. All these XLR sockets are the old type. This thing was built in the mid-90s. It's the old style that just basically the only thing that's uh, keeping them in there is the solder connections on the board. And they get broke quite often. One of the interesting things about this amplifier is, if you'll notice right here, the uh, the power amplifier section and the power supply section is from a 400 BH uh, amplifier, which is a base head. But they use the same power supply and, and power amplifier section uh, panel and and everything that's uh, connected to it in the, inside the actual unit uh, on several PA amp, uh, PVPA amps. Uh, several models different configurations but it's all the it's all the same so it, I found that pretty interesting this thing also has a Accutronics reverb tank in it spring reverb tank so we're gonna take a look at that in this video as well uh, we're gonna repair the XLR also gonna touch up uh, some of the uh, solder connections on those XLRs because they're they're stressed on the board and they're they're just gonna fail eventually and replace that one XLR, clean up all the pots, clean up the jacks, and just do a basic service on this thing and then test it out. If that sounds like something you're interested in, then stick around. Okay, so the original audio is about to pick up here, but I just wanted to point out that I removed this front panel and then eventually the, the board uh, off camera. And basically it's just about six screws to remove the front panel and then in order to take the board off, you have to remove about 40 knobs and uh, about 50 washers and, and nuts uh, around the jacks in each, in, in each potentiometer. Uh, to change the XLR, you wouldn't have to do that. Uh, you can just insert it from the front and solder it in on the back. But in order to clean the pots, you have to take the board out. So. Right now the board is still in the actual, uh, on the face plate, but eventually I take it all off and take the board out so I can clean the pots. But uh, I just did all that off camera. So right now I'm about to touch up the, the solder joints on this thing. So while my iron's heating up, I'm just gonna flex these connections real good. A little flux on here. Make them uh, reflow a little bit better. Kind of a poor design on these to have things mounted right on the PCB like this. The newer style uh, jacks and XLR connectors and stuff like that have little ring mounts on them that will screw to the chassis and that kind of gives it the support where it's not being supported by just the PCB. You got people pulling cables in and out of these, you end up getting you know cracks and stuff in these solder joints down here and it can really work a it can do a number on one of these things so I'm just gonna reflow these real quick and um, we'll go from there and this they don't put much solder on these because this is all flow soldered so I have to add a little bit And 
and this is the this is the bad one right here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and suck all the solder off of this while I'm at it. And I got all the solder cleaned out of those holes right there, so I don't know how well you can see that on the camera, but go ahead and finish finish retouching these. All right, I'm going to get some uh, alcohol and my brush and give this a really good clean in here. And then I'll go back and recheck each one of these solder joints under my magnifying glass to make sure that they're they reflowed all right looks like I need to go back over that one right there let's see want to make sure you get all the flux off of this stuff because uh, that flux can uh, well they can cause things to stick to the back of the circuit board contaminants and stuff and also it can it could actually become conductive itself so um, just don't want to I gotta fix that right there so Couple spots need to go back over. When they put the quarter inch jacks in, they just put the pins straight through and when they put the XLRs in, they bend them and if you can put these things in without bending them, it's 
much easier, but I know why they did it, because there's just not any support, but, um, either way, on these things, you're gonna, you're gonna end up cracking those solder joints, whether you bend them or not, so, I don't know. gonna go ahead and check this board out with uh, the rest of the connections and uh, see if I find anything and then uh, I'll probably go ahead and through go ahead and go through and clean all the pots on the other side if, the, if they're not sealed I didn't look at them too well and then uh, we'll just be waiting on the um, on the part to come in and we'll get that soldered back in here and give it a test and then we'll look at that on the schematic and I'll show you what I was talking about, about the inverted and non-inverted side of those op amps. Stay tuned. All right, so I cleaned out all the pots, you know, all uh, 48 of them. Uh, back here you can see what we have inside. We have our power transformer, obviously. We have a heat sink shelf there with our output transform our output transistors. And we also have our power supply board back there. So, you know, this, I just saw on the board here that this thing was made in 1990, so it's 30 years old. Uh, I'm going to check the electrolytic caps on it, but I'm thinking maybe they're probably good. I see some IC caps, Illinois capacitor uh, caps back there that may not be good. Those kind of... We're not very good caps back in the 90s. Probably still not are today. Um, yeah. We'll see where we go from here. Once we get this thing all repaired, um, as far as the XLR goes, oh, we've got the reverb tank, and looks like somebody's been in here messing with this because this it's missing a couple of mountain screws on the reverb tank here. So I'll try to get that uh, mounted back right. We'll see what everything looks like. Hopefully I don't have to do anything with to the the output into this thing. But uh, if I have to, we'll go and we'll try to fix that as well. All right, so it's a couple days later. I got the part in, as you can see here. It's a NC3F1P uh, made by Nutric. And so we're going to solder this in and get this thing back up and running, hopefully. All right, I got one hole that needs cleaned out here, so see what we can do about that. So this thing has four pins, but uh, two of the pins are the same point, uh, as you can see here on the trace. It's got a pin here and a pin here that's on the same trace. So I believe, yeah, so pin one and ground are the same point, and then uh, three and two. So three and two will go to the op amp. And these things are not wanting to go in there. On these type of uh, sockets, 
you want to make sure that you get those pins all the way in there and the socket pushed up all the way against the board. Uh, these have no retaining ring or anything on the face plate. So they're basically held on this board just by these solder joints. So you want to make sure you get a good solder connection. I'm going to clean this off real good. I'm going to flex it real good. And we're going to get a really good solder joint right here on these pads. So I use flux uh, paste a lot, but I have really, I bought this Kester flux pin <clears throat> a while back, and I've got a lot of use out of it, and really for little jobs like this, I think it's, I think it's really good. All right, let's get started. You really want to make sure you got some good solder joints on this. Like I was saying earlier, this is all that's going to be holding this thing on the board. So let's clean this up and see what it looks like. Okay, let's see if I can zoom in on this and see what you think. That's those four right there in the middle of your screen there, so. They look good. So, should be good to go on that. All right, so I'm going to get this thing back up. Uh, put, I'm going to run some tests on it before I put it all together. I'll show you how I run the tests on a balanced input uh, with the signal generator. If you've never ran a signal generator test uh, on a balanced input. It's a little bit different. You have to use uh, two signals, one 180 degrees out from the other one. So I'll show you how to set that up and we'll go from there. Okay, so I had to, I had to put this thing about halfway together. I've got a, a few of the nuts on the on some pots and on the quarter inch jacks and i've got the nuts on the or the screws in the top and bottom for the face plate control plate i just wanted to make sure i had plenty of stability what i've done here is i've taken apart a uh, male to female ex uh, adapter and i've just plugged my signal signal generator into it two channels I'm about, to, I'm about to test these uh, balanced inputs on these XLR sockets. So, show you how I do that on my signal generator. Also, I'm going to go through with you on how you can um, check your EQ as well with the signal generator. So, we'll go through that. Pardon the fan, but it's really hot in here. And... Uh, you're going to probably get that band noise, but anyway. So on my signal generator, you can see that I've got one of my channels uh, 180 degrees out of phase. Uh, the other channel, flip it over to channel 2, or channel 1, rather. Let's see. I'll make it zero degrees. So I got zero degrees on that one, and zero degrees on channel one. Oh, I got zero degrees on channel one. Let's see here. 
Let's make it 180. I've got a kilohertz, one kilohertz signal, or no, I got a thousand hertz. One kilohertz, right? One kilohertz signal. I got one kilohertz signal on here uh, with the 180 degrees phase shift on channel one. And I've got an amplitude of, I think I got 100, 100 millivolts. So sine wave. You can see that. And I'll just flip through this. No offset. 50% duty cycle. So perfect uh, sine wave. And then a uh, phase angle of zero on that channel. And I got a phase angle of 180 on the other channel. Okay, so let's uh, turn these channels on. And let's see what we got. All right, so I uh, should turn the main master up. We should begin our tone. There we go. Check the level. This thing gets loud, so, yep. There's our level. And since I got a thousand Hertz on there, let's check the one K slider. See that, hear that? When you cut it out, it basically just practically goes away. So that's telling you that it's doing its job for the one K Hertz. Now, if you check the other ones on either side of it, it should have a little effect. And that one needs to be cleaned up. I have to go in there and clean that one should have a little effect on the ones on either side of it but the further you go the less of effect it should have all these sliders need to be this is a different circuit board back here so I'll go back and uh, tear that circuit board off and clean up all these but see like your 63 Hertz no effect whatsoever so if you want to take your signal generator down to the 63 Hertz range it could be 60 Hertz that's fine and then uh, very low you can see that works great or you can hear See nothing up here in the 16K band It's affecting it at all. We'll go up to 16K. I can't even hear 16K, so that's not going to help me. Uh, but uh, I'm going to put this thing on the O-scope and uh, actually check out the signal there because I can't hear 16K. So you can, you can get a reading on it that way. But I'm going to go ahead and check out the rest of these XLR connections and make sure that they're good. And if I don't find any other problems, I'm going to clean up the rest of this and get this thing put back together. And maybe I'll plug a guitar or something into it. And uh, into a quarter inch jack and see what it sounds like with the guitar. And that'll be the end of this video. All right, so I'm just gonna go through each one of these channels. Right now I have all the channels set up exactly the same way with the effects on five, the level on five, and the tones halfway up. Uh, at zero and I've got the master on this thing at, at about one this is a 200 watt amplifier into a 8 ohm load so um, I've only got a 30 watt speaker that I'm playing this through so we're gonna keep it relatively quiet we just can see how it sounds let's 
see what it sounds like with the full reverb here. Yep, it's got some good reverb sound to it. difference between that neck pickup and that bridge pickup on these thing on this uh, Mustang it's got two p90s in it but um anyway we're looking at the amp here so but yeah a nice clean tone it would make a great pedal platform platform for a guitar if you were playing in like a, a church or a, a theater or something you just wanted to plug in it would be great right through the PA let's try channel two <laughs> So far, so good. Channel four. Channel 7.
some great reverb, man. Great reverb. Let's try the last channel. I'll tell you what, there's a lot of difference between, you can see this, this volume here is straight up and this one's just a little off to the right. And it's that much louder. Here we go. That's more in line with the way channel seven was a little bit. Okay. Like I said, I only got this 30 watt uh, speaker that I'm playing through right here, this Black Star 12 inch speaker. Uh, so I'm not going to crank this thing up. Um, I played all that with the each channel on about 50% on five and the master volume like on one. <laughs> so uh, this thing will, you know, it'll put out if I turn that up anymore. Um, it would do 200 watts, I think, into an 8-ohm load, so pretty stout. Everything's working good. All the pots are clean. All the sliders, I cleaned up all the sliders. We don't have any noise on any of the sliders, so um, everything should be good. I'll get this back to the uh, customer, which happens to be my dad. He uh, found this thing in a, in a church closet. It's probably been there for the last 20 years. It's... But we did the repair on one of the XLR sockets. And we touched up a few solder joints inside that were bad. And we cleaned up all these pots, which I think there was 40 somewhat of them. The sliders, all the jacks, and all the output jacks on the back as well for the speakers. So everything is good to go in this thing. We'll get it back and maybe then get some use out of it. Hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time.